So, we have now been going. How long have we been going? Are you pulling daft faces? No, I'm not. Oh, it's daft uh, 28, faces. 2018 to... No, not on that one. When it, on the members <laughs> channel, we've... chaos as always, isn't it? <laughs> on the members side of things, on Winning Ways, I think we've been going about 18 months. Yeah, Just I'd after say lockdown. So. Yeah, yeah, it was. Where, yeah. If you haven't seen, we cover live matches, we have Q&As, we have lots of daft guests as well. Oh, very good. Even good getting guests. special guests, proper good ones at the minute. very special oh, ones yes. that are actually teaching us lots at the minute. But... So if you haven't seen, the main thing that we cover is a live match every month. The one of us goes to a random fishery, who knows where, fishes a match, and Rich covers how we mess the peg up on the day, pretty much. Well, some more than others, to be fair. Yes. <laughs> yes. But what we had, to keep everyone happy, we want to show you, it, it sort of happened by its own accord. We had a bit of a chaos one, with traffic keeping us late, and camera malfunctions, and all sorts of care. So we had a match that we couldn't really use as the members one that, for people to pay for. So we thought... We put it out as a nice freebie for everyone to see. Just a, a bit of a sneak peek at what we do every month. I mean, it, it, we have a lot more, of course, with videos that we go in depth yes. after the match and yeah, all that yeah. sort of stuff. But we want to show you the live match type of coverage that you can expect if you join the Winning Ways members channel. So for this one, it was a, cra it was a very crazy one. I think both of us were actually late, weren't we? It was a very, very Lots lively traffic. one. No, Rich, Rich wasn't late. Rich is never, Rich late. never late. I was late. Um, and it was the Preston Innovations Pole Championships at Woodland View. Woodland View, yeah, yeah. Uh, when was it? September-ish? Back of September. You're all still in T-shirt, so it's warm. Oh, it was, week before FA final. So, yes, back back when fishing was edge fishing and shallow fishing and really, really good. And we had a lovely day. Got lots of fish. Well, Woodland is up there. We must say this about everywhere, but genuinely, it's one of my favourite venues. I like Woodland. And I don't, it's just, yeah, I just like it. Lots of big fish, isn't there? It's like lots of clever fishing as well, and yeah, moody, difficult to catch fish. So it was a typical match for that that I should have won, didn't win, but yeah, hopefully have a quick look at this and you can see what to expect if you join our members channel. But for now, enjoy this one. Something a bit different again, and I feel like I've been on the box talking to cameras a lot, Rich. Definitely done far more work than Andy this month. Definitely, definitely. But anyway, we are at, where are we today? We're doing another live match, and we're at Woodland View for the, the Preston Innovations UK Pole Championships final. I think there was no rod, so it must be pole championships. But yeah, it was an event that Preston are running this year, and they had, what did they have? They had three qualifiers at Aston Park, Alders Farm and Backington, and they had 60 on each, and it was 20 people from each went through, so the 60 in the final. And we're at Woodland View, Woodland View down in Droitwich, which is one of my favouritest places in the world. And we've drawn all right. all right. I'm quite happy with where I've drawn. I'm on 37 on Back Deans, which Back Deans has been a bit moody, but I always like it on, on either of the Deans, I always like it because there's some massive big old things. So you can come from nowhere later on and always catch up with a few big fish feeding. How it's going to be, you're going to have to excuse me for this one because it has been a mad rush with some really horrible traffic on the way here. So we haven't had time to do any rigs, anything yet for, to go through filming wise. I think we've got about four minutes left till the start of the match. So we're, we're straight into it and I'll cover all that at the end for this one. Go through what rigs we're going to do, but very simple approach. So we've got a bait limit of, what's bait limit here? Eight pints. So I haven't got a lot to play with. I can't change. I've got to choose what I'm doing and go with it. And I'm just going to fish with pellet and corn. Keep things really simple. I think it's going to be a low weight job of like 100, 130 pound will get me in. So there's good prizes for top five, so it, it's it's not a match we've got to win. I mean, it'd be nice, very, very nice, but just coming in the top and do the job for this one. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to have a very safe match. I'm going to catch lots of little fish, probably start short, catch some small ones on, on hard pellets, go long, do the same, but also keep my eye out for any muggers that are available because this is the a serious mugging venue when they pop up, which there's a good chance they will today. And then hopefully a later arrival later on. Unless mugging's an option, it's always a slow start venue this, where you need to catch your little fish. So they're going to be very important early on before we change and we catch some great big ones later on with a bit of luck. We've got a bit of room, we've got one empty bag on our right, and we've got John Harvey after that, so he's going to be a, a more tricky one to beat on the end. And then I've got two pegs to me left, so I've got a bit of room today, so there's a chance catching on this next pallet later on. So that's me, me vague plan for today is that start short got my edge covered and i've got a long line as well so three lines that i'm going to feed maybe a fourth we'll see what's going on 
but it's very much going to be I watch what's going on and I need to mug some fish today because they're going to boost my weight I mean, massively because of the size of them. So I'm going to get my pallet on before we start so that rig's ready and at any time we can see one we're going to nab it. But I'm going to get my bait ready now and we're nearly good to go. So whistle hasn't gone yet and I've got to decide what I'm going to do because that's safe for a quick bite but probably a little fish if I start shorting. A lot of the reports you see is that they struggled and didn't catch early on so I've not really seen signs of fish close. I've not seen mud coming up like you normally see it. I might go straight out. I think I might go straight out with a rig and just turn it over. I think that might be the safe option today because we're seeing a few. We're going to, I'm going to, I'm just going to go straight out and turn the rig over. Just because, and you love, have a good in. Just because we're seeing another and I feel like I'm going to catch a carp if I do that. Whereas, Starting short, I'll catch a crucian or a skimmer or a. I mean, I probably won't catch one of these great big ones, but there's some about. So I might just be there, just being patient. It's going to my spot where I'm going to feed. And just turn the leg over. So, what I'm paying attention to is firstly where my shadow is. My shadow's on my left hand side of my pole. So, every fisher I have a go at. wants to be on the right hand side of the pole so I'm a tiny bit too deep there, I don't like that then. Was I? So the best depth in the minute has been two bait boxes deep. And I felt it was just a little bit bigger than that then, yeah, I am. So I'm gonna move that down just because there's mugging as an option. So I missed a chance then, one come past and I didn't get him. So I was messing a bear. I can't remember how these liked it last time. Like I've been here a couple of times this year. I can't remember what were best. So I've set up a couple of rigs. I've set up a swinger. Swinging rig. With a bit longer line in case they, they don't want to come near it. And we've also set up me, me slapping rig that I've got on now, me turn the ovary rig. It's just not missing any opportunities. I'm not going to feed for a little bit. So everyone else has gone straight in with giving them some bait. He's had a fish opposite there. That was a short fish. And it was a decent short fish as well. I'm happy doing this. I feel like this is at the minute I feel it's right. There's a big swirl then. So what you've got to find is what that plop does. It's been a big thing at this time of year. I thought something broke then. At this time of year they're normally sick of noise. So you've got to be very careful the noise you make. You don't want to make too much noise. I can add one short as well. I might have messed up here fishing wrong to start with. Maybe we should have started short. I just felt like I was going to get one. Another, he's caught one, he's got an F1. I don't want to miss my chance. I've got to go in in the next two or three minutes short if I'm going to. I'll give this one more minute, it's a bit of a breeze going now, so I can't see one. We'll naff it off. I've not had an accidental bite on my spot either yet. He's off one as well, so it's definitely messed up here, isn't he? Should have caught one short to begin with, and I didn't. Now, as soon as I come off that, there will be a mugger swim past, like a dawdle past me now. But that's what they do. A few four mils, let's just go in with that. fishing there. Mm, so with it being a low weight one, I can't 
miss things like that. That was bad. That's cost me some fish by doing it wrong then. Definitely cost me a couple of pounds. With it being a little awake, I don't want to do that. That was a bad move. But let's see what happens. So we'll go in here, feed. I'm not going to go this long. This is getting 10 minutes, depending on what happens. And then I need to get out there and start fishing on bottom. Thought we'd see a few more. I'm quite surprised we ain't seen a few more big and swimming about. The weather's there. I thought there'd be loads. Fishing right. so As soon as we come off it, we bloody saw one. Not right in it. There's a couple of indications on this, but not Houdini bites. I'm always confused at what to do on here as well on this short line. Because you fish with all them big daft pellets on here that the fish definitely like. And we've got some wibbles, I've got some blown sixes and eights, just in case that we need that sort of thing. But I'm never a fan of it. I'm never really a fan of that. But because they feed so many micros, they like a micro pellet on here, whereas four mils, them big ones don't seem to like them as much. Never really catch many on a big hard pellet here. Both up carp there, both fishing top getting a bit. John's had one. That's in the tail, lad. that's a big lad. It's not the right way. Stupid fish, aren't he? What's all that about? Boinging about like a flipping toddler. <laughs> boing, boing. So I've caught a fish. Now we're playing. Now we're playing. Stop messing about and let's just catch fish. Feeding a few fours. And I've just put some micros in on that line as well, just because they like them. And if we're going to catch fish like that, then micros will keep them in peg a lot better. That's what we're, we can't feed too many micros, so we've got a full tub. And I really want to save them for me. Me edging, down a bit type fishing. That's where that's going to be fed. Mm -hmm. Felt nice then as well. I thought that was gob that. To do that long line, whether to feed it now or not. I didn't want to feed it straight away just in case the carp are here and I didn't want to upset them. But since we started, after that first five minutes, they've all, the ones that we were seeing have disappeared. But I don't know what they do on here, whether they like, they go up and down. So you might feel like there's loads in your peg at one minute and the next they just drift off and then they come back and I think that sort of thing happens here. So I can't see him now, there's no reason there won't be a peg full of carp in 10 minutes. So I'm not going to feed it just yet, just in case that putting feed out there upsets the, the bigger fish. Mm. But I can't leave it too long because I need to catch some small fish. And they're not feeding really well today, they're not on it going mad. And so we're going in on this and it's not. Normally there's lots of little indications and it's just not happening, nothing's happening. Let's we'll see, a couple more minutes and I might feed I see there's another one out there now. Yeah, big fish has just left me peg. Let me take lid off. Oh. They're on it fast, aren't they? As soon as baked in. Really, really quickly on it. I definitely messed up. I reckon I've missed my carp. I 
missed the carpet opportunity, I reckon. So I'm going to feed a bit of bait. I'm going to go long. You know, I've only fed it like twice. I'm just going to go and sit there because I feel like I've got more chance of getting bite out there than I have. Sit the shorts. I can't be on that one. There's loads of muggers on that one. Just none on this one. Feeling it, we're feeling gentle. See another one coming in. See another one shallow then. Oh, there's some there now. Just give it one cast. Some about now, isn't it? Let's see, whatever rig I put on has been the wrong rig, the first three. If I miss them now, but they were there then. I think I remember them being horrible last time, like really, really hard to mug on. Uh, whatever I was on, seven or eight on front. around then, isn't it? See, they didn't like it as soon as we did it, it like went. Can't believe we ain't had a bite yet. Like we ain't caught a fish yet, have we? Not worth catching. Starting to fizz on the bottom now, and that's what I want. I want that to like proper build with loads of little fish, and we're just going and going and going, and you can just keep lifting. And hopefully, not foul up too many. They're just starting to fizz a little bit, which is what we want. First bite over me bait, that only a little fish, but first bite over me bait. Half an hour in already, and I've got two flipping skimmers in the net. Jake got three sets of fish because I say low weight job. I've got to stop being a dick and trying to catch carp that aren't eating. But what I'm going to do is put a pellet on just in case. Just in case they pop up when we start. We need to grab that rig quick, but that's the rig I'm feeling that on the decky. Get bites rig. Just catch everything. Job. I'm gonna put a cup on for first chuck. Then I'm gonna get rid of the cup very, very quickly because I wanna I wanna be aggressive with this. I wanna get catty out, make loads and loads of noise. And get loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of fish in my peg with a bit of luck. I'm just left peg here. There's a whizzing, but I just I think we're seeing them but they're not feeding. That's what I'm gonna put it down to today. Yeah, they're seeing but not feeding. So don't mind that. Yes, we don't mind that. As long as no one's catching them, it don't matter. 
and I think they've only been like three cap caught, maybe four. I think Dave might have had one next door. So there's not been many carp caught at all yet. So I think if I just catch some fish, I mean 10 pound and all of a sudden you've caught everyone up and you're flying. So let's just do that. I'm gonna take this pot off already, already don't like the pot. I just think it concentrates things a little bit too much. Like when that first went in, there fish everywhere. Little carps. Mm. That wind come from me, shot. It's like the standard woodlands match that they're fishing in it. Just sit on top of it and be patient. I can't do that, me. Far too impatient to do that. Still don't feel I've got quite enough bait in me peg yet. I've not drawn enough fish in. So we've got to bite nice and quick then, but I've gone back in second cast. And it's not gone, and I want that going all the time. I want loads of little indications on that to make me think there's loads and loads of fish there. Because there's plenty in here, there's lots of like little fish in here that no one fishes for ever. So we're hoping to catch loads of them. See the fizzing, they're starting to play. As long as they start fizzing, we can do something. Maybe pop was a way just to tighten them up a little bit, keep them a little bit more accurate. I thought there were more fish in my bag than what there actually is, I think. There's indications, but not a bite, but it's weird. It's like the, I don't feel like the indications are up off the bottom too much. I feel like they're close to the bottom. But there's just not the numbers there to find me bait. Maybe a bigger pellet's the way to go. of a bigger pellet could be the answer. See John's miles ahead of me next to me, he's catching quite a few fish. So he's going down the patient short route, I think. It's fair play. So Dave, that side of me, is going down the very negative pellet route. Just two or three pellets, which I'm not feeling that. No, I'm definitely not feeling that. I think you need to go down the aggressive little fish pellet route or patient big bait. And I don't think out there, the fish you want to catch, the big fish, they don't feed out there anyway. This is just for catching little fish out here. So I may as well just catch everything. Happy. Playing this like a little girl or what? 
I've got a little bit of yuck on them, I might call it scared. I haven't had an 18 on for about three months. So we've got somewhere to go now, I'm happy with that. Not fast and furious, but if I can catch an odd little carp, an odd F1, a big skimmer, whatever else, it ticks over. So that's all it's about here, because mugging's not an option. It potentially lower the weights for, for everyone, especially on this level. Mugging's not an option on here anyway. Well, not up this end anyway, so. It'd be like a low weight job, it'll just be a... So I'd have mugged him as well, I'd have definitely had him. Definitely I'd have had him. Of course, come to eat me flow. That's the first one that I'd be like, yeah, he's having it. See, it's better this cast as well. I fed at the wrong time, I fed. When I've laid it in, that's when I've fed. And I've got it in and my float's going all the time, so there's fish there now. But what I want to happen is to keep them on deck. So next time when I'm going to try and hook a fish, and then as soon as I've booked one, that's when I want to feed. So you can't believe me in the peg then. I want to feed with probably double that when I've booked one. Keep them on the bottom. And then hopefully by the time I've landed a fish, I talk about this sort of thing loads, but by the time I've been out there, landed a fish, me bait will have gone in, settled on the bottom, be happy. feed this time because hopefully I wasn't even watching where that bait went but I'm hoping it went, <laughs> it went where I wanted it to so no rush don't want to feed over the top as soon as I feed over the top make noise they're going to start looking up and go a little bit weird don't want to do that so very much so with the weather and the type of fish and everything they don't want to be on the bottom but trying to catch them shallow I don't think there's it's just See a random skimmer fly out the blue, don't you? Foul locked on that. Checking. Didn't look it, did it? It looked like a plodder then. See, that's worked so good for them last two fish. They said, just changing your feeding, and all of a sudden I've not got. Not had as many indications on my rig spinning, but it's two fish, both in the gob and two. What have I had? Carp and a skimp. Oh, well worth playing. Well worth playing. Just gonna not feed for this one cast, just see what they do. There's a few carp, and I'm seeing an odd one again now. I'm actually feeling this wind in the way that it's become it knackered the shallow fit or the the muggy. But it might make it very good for fishing, for feeding. And if I let them do what they want to do themselves, as in let the peg develop of its own accord instead of trying to push it, it might mean that a load of carp are down here feeding later on. 
this wind pushing this way, it's looking sexy. John will right be fancying his for his shallow line, but it's just whether that's right. Oh, that was me issue with casters. Has that just died in me peg or it's not a fish, is it? Just tried to mug a plastic bag rich. And fat. <laughs> well, it didn't have a mouth, so <laughs> can't catch it without a mouth. Mm -hmm. Just trying not to feed, I really don't want to feed. I can help it. So really, I want that wind to just ease off so I can see the bubbles, because that tells me when I need to feed or not. If there's no fizz in, then I know there's nothing there. Whereas if there's a bit of fizzing going on, you know that the fish are present, you've just got to be patient. Well, we'll see. We'll see. I think I do need to feed in a minute. I'm sure I had a bite then a minute ago. But in this cast, I've gone in and nothing's happened. I might still be in that early bit where I do need to just feed a bit more regularly. Although it does create a no problem. Just feeding a bit more regularly just gets a malt peg. proper ripping it. So when I've been, when I'm feeding as well, I'm trying to drop everything just short. I'm trying to not feed right on the end of my pole. So I'm trying to feed just short, like one of my 14 halves, I'm trying to feed at 14-ish. Just so the chaos isn't over me bait, over me rig, sorry. You know, I wanted me to just be on the back of it, it just should give me a few cleaner bites, because Although we can't see it, it's something that's been happening a lot of other places I'm fishing. And that when they're ripping it up like that, they can't see your bait, not a chance. I mean, not when there's that many bubbles, because the, the bubbles are there because of the silt, because of the nastiness. So if you try and fish in that, you're just going to have issues. So we don't want any of that going on. So instead, By feeding short, hopefully it gives me a few cleaner bites. I mean, yes, because the way I'm feeding, I'm still going to have problems because you're pulling loads of fish in the bag. It's not a nice, tight, controlled environment. You're dragging as many fish as you can into the bag to try and get quick bites so they do find it among the crap. I'm going to feed. I'm just going to try one over the top. Let's see what that does. So I might have to plumb up a bit there as well. I've got to be careful. I plumbed up and it felt nice. But I might have to keep going in with the plumbers, just checking if they really do keep fizzing. It might be worth just going in and having a... having a look at what they've done every now and again to see if it is getting much deeper. The float's just all of a sudden just gone a little bit lower. But that could be a bit of both. That could be the, the wind pushing it and just tightening it up a little bit. And because it's only a bit like there because it's only a little bristle. I've gone with like quite a delicate one out there, just a 1.5 mil, my normal blue um, Tim Moore Slims. Because it's that, the, the, the push of the wind can just make it go a little bit lower. What are they catching over there? They're not catching many fish. Well, he's had one big and... No, I'm happy that that short line isn't the way to, to sit there all day. It's not that sort of day. I feel like I can spend a couple of hours doing this safely before they start feeding, if they start feeding. See, crappy feeding now, that will pass me bait, that's what, not what I want. Might have to put that pot on maybe, just to maybe just tighten them up a little bit, maybe, I don't know. I thought we had it sus for a minute, but obviously not. I 
Yeah, boy. What? Got a bit wet. Put a pot on and try and group them a little bit. Just like tightens them a bit, but I'll put that pot in because it's so accurate. It's often not a good thing because it just it puts them too much of a tight area and you get problems then. And like I mentioned with the cation, at least cation, you can time your feeding with your pot. You're limited to when you go out there, or do you know what I mean? It's not the same doing it any other time. You can keep it in your pot until you've had a bite if you want, but no, nah. it ain't January F1 fishing. Definitely not. So, keep ticking over. Let's just feed a few short. A little bit of noise. It's interesting, like four or five when your rig's in. You're not doing that to get a bite, that's just to read what's happening. There's a swear. No, there's not. There's a bit of crap on the top. It's not as good as last time I did this. Right, when I were on behind us, there's a lot more indications. That said, I, I did this as well on the MPEG on this bank. I drew there, but a very different peg, that very, very shallow and not right. And it was hard to get bites there as well. Maybe this lake's just, it's not the way that they're going to really, really respond to this sort of thing, maybe. Yes, so we've gone back shallow. Or sort of shallow, like muggy knee stroke, fishing over the spot, usual stuff. We had an F1 by accident, but we've also just mugged our first one. Which we'll see what stamp they are, because if it's them creature, 10 pounders, then you might as well just do this. But it depends, there's lots of like, different stamp carp in here. There's like three pounders, five pounders, which this one is. And then the big old boys. I don't think this is a big old boy. Five pounder, but at least it's the first one we've had mugging, and there's another one about. So, I'm seeing the odd one in John's casters and everything, there's things are starting to change. Yeah, there's fish feeding now. Baby mugger, yes, baby mugger, that one for, for here. Oh, these are well bigger than that. But it's a start, at least. At least we've had one. At least we've had one, so I'm going to stay on that for a minute. Give it one more go. Catch with a little brown, slow sinking e six mil, the usuals. Thought he was on. So things are definitely happening. I think the carp are going to feed this end as well. It just feels like, it just feels nicer. Yeah, we're getting a bit of thingy. A bit of ripples, bringing a bit of muck, a bit of scum on the water. And they like that. It's all they do in love. The John's catching it, I don't know. It's just like mugged one on the way out. He's had an F1. He's missed two carpy bites. But it's all sexy there because it's all that scum's like just holding the crap. So 
looks very, very nice. Very nice. Whereas I'm just sitting there like a dick catching nothing. I need to bin this long line, it ain't gonna happen. No little fish feeding. And I need to just fish short, don't I? Short and shallow and wait for carpies to feed. Another one here, there's nothing about. The only place you see them is there. Muggy one at Woodlands the other day and it did it. Actually muggy one. So sound. Is that in the mouth? At least it's a fing cat, but still. Not in the right area. Time for a change because this is crap. I ain't catching anything. So I've been that long line because I just feel I've got too much bait in my peg on that. Like loads and loads of bait, which ain't no good. So the only fish really being caught. So John's catching an odd and flicking his rig past. This cast is shallow, but we can't do that. So the only other fish getting caught is short or like edgy or off the banky, that sort of thing. So, I need to have a little dabble of that. So I'm just gonna feed off the bank to start with. But I plumbed off me deeper one. I'm gonna have a little go there, because it was quite a cliff there, but if I can get it to settle with a big bait, I'm gonna fish with corn, because it stays where you want it. I'll just see if the, there's an odd and sneaking in. So I've got a few options here. I can fish them big daft pellets or some corn or whatever else. It's been a swirl to the left then. There's been a fish down there. It's quite a steep slope there as well, so any fish that are shallower, you're gonna see them like we did with that one then. So I've already fed a little bit of bait on the pallet where it is very shallow. So if any come on that, we should be able to see things happening. But as for this, I've not fed this one with deeper lines. I do think they swim there. I think that's where they live on this lake. Definitely the feeding fish live down the slope a little bit and they just swim along this bank non-stop. They don't feed out there where I'm trying to catch them. That's where the little fish live. So instead, we're going to try and catch them there, down the slope a bit. So I've just fed 10 pieces of corn. Oop, indication there. 10 pieces of corn and a couple of microbes just to try and get an instant fish. If you've not prepped it, not put any bait there. We're just going straight in and seeing what's there eating. Another little indication then. Might be a little bit early doing this, but I'm catching nothing else. I ain't got a choice. Yeah, that long line's really frustrating. I feel like I've put too much bait on that now. Knackered that right off. There's nowhere near the volume of fish feeding that I needed to feed. Then. Something happened that hasn't been happening. Yeah, not a lot, a little pinch of corn. Just a couple of micros, not many. There's none swimming as well. I thought we'd see loads by now on the top. There's none. None today. None, none, none. I'm going to go rich there. Oh, just be patient. Be patient and see if any are coming in. So by feeding micros and with corn, at least we can still catch weird fish as well. Some skimmers and some F1s if there's any there. But also, we will catch any carpies that are coming in. Yeah, indication on that then? See, they're there. I've gone quite light though. Light for a woodland standard as well. I've just gone like a 16 to 014 on the hook there as well. 04, no, well done. Yeah, 16 up to 014, so not heavy. Just so I can catch every sink that's having a chew. Put it tight in a bit more. No, that wasn't the quick 
fish that I was hoping for. Very early to be on that as well, though. Very, very early to be on that. But I needed to have a quick go, lack of options. There's fish there, it's moving, isn't it? But what are they? Are they little bitty fish? Or are they carp that are a bit shallower? No, they've got to be little fish then. There ain't no carp he's doing that. No chance. No chance. They're little fish mucking about with them, aren't they? Look at these crappy bites and just not right. Yes, we knew that was going to do that. So, so at least it's fishing me net that I wasn't catching. Like a little boat to fish. They're not little fish either, they're a pound, aren't they? They're a pound, so they're not, not worth catching. Let's keep doing that then. If I'm putting something in the net, it'll have to do. For a little while, so it's a that ghost, I've had a go at him before, that ghosty. We didn't have any of it. Look at him. <laughs> I don't even think he's big. I think he's just a wild f one -y type thing, isn't he? He's not a big one, he? I'll keep pinging that long line, just a few. I'm just giving it 20 minutes just to clear out before I start feeding it again. Because there was a lot of bait on that long line, I think. Let them, let them eat it, and then we'll start again if we need to. See, it is a weird venue for me, this, when it comes to catching on bottom. I definitely do struggle with knowing what's right. It's all right when they're shallow and they're mugging them. We're good at that. But when they're fingy, when they have days like this and they're on the bottom, this is when the lads that come here do really well, just because they know. They know what they should be doing at the right times. They don't waste time doing what I'm doing now if it's not the right time to be doing it, if that makes sense. I don't know if the carp's just left me peg then. Something just happened then. The big swales, maybe. Yeah, I think the carp's just left me peg then. Whether it left this one or um, or the shallow one tight to the peg. Oh, we've, we've got an the cap as well. Well, that's not in the mouth, but at least it's promising that things are happening. If we can land it, it'll be a massive, massive bonus. But it's pulling very, very hard. Done the initial one, half a chance. That's him out there. Halfway, and he fell off. But at least it's a car. That's not good. Oh, in fact, no, that's all right. Mm. Might have landed that if I hadn't broke it. That won't pull it now, was it? That weren't like, wow. Maybe. Shh. Don't tell anyone. It's a secret. I should really get a mug and rig on because I can see about 27. So let me just put this hook on and then let's have a quick swing. All the roll here. That was promising, that one. That happening is actually not a bad thing, that. So, something's just happened. Just missed one. In sedge. Like down, but the carp I was off. But I don't think they're in the depth I'm trying to catch them in. So I'm going to try a different depth. That's the plan. So I'm going to go, I've seen the tail waving. Right on me. Right in the edge. So I've got to give it a little go and see. I've already put a little bit of bait there, I said to tease him. 
you want to just proper stodged up some micro so they're really, really wet. So they stay where I feed them. I'm going to feed them dead, 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 dead tight. Right on the next pallet that I've, I can see. Do a bit of leaning. See if I get a clean bite off here. It's horrible light down here. Horrible light. But it doesn't matter, it is what it is. Right onto the shallowest bit. And just see. So that one's probably a metre. Yeah, a metre closer in. And he's like, what are you doing, Richard? <laughs> what are you doing? You need to turn it on. Wait, they give me one cast on it, and then when I come off it, I have a fix of it. I'm not feeling it going. I think it's right though. I think it gets caught and it's just left it on. Oh, it's a carp, isn't it? do is I'm going to have a week and that's going to be my half time break and I reckon at half time we've got what have we got Rich? £25 that's like very generous isn't it? That's like what we've got actual telling the truth the plan now is just rotating the two so I think it's right Yes, I do feel that that's right. It's their catching now. It's time, isn't it, to, to try and catch feeding fish. And that was a carp then that we just had where I thought they weren't. So, that's it. Shallow fishing aborted, unless they all pop up. I'm just going to go up and down the shelf here. They're right in the shallow water now. They're definitely in there now. So I'll get some bait in. Let me go over the top. See if I can get one of them. So I'm never going to feed volumes of bait, it's just little piles. That's what these ones do. Carpenter here don't like big pots and sending them nuts. You've had that for 20 years in here. So we're going with a little trap. I mean, a decent trap every go, like a full cup every go, but that's all they're ever getting. Oh, I just missed it then. It's a bite though, I don't think it's big enough. I didn't like it race off at me peg or nothing. So I'm going with just some corn and some loose micros this time. Oh no, I'll put that right on top one then. Dick. Didn't think there was one there then. There was definitely. I'll just be patient, I'll wait for it. Houdini bite, and we've got another one. Is he in the mouth? He's in the mouth then. Definitely in the mouth. Let's try not to take Richard out. Let's try not to take Richard out. I think that's just an F1, that one. But what we could do is felt like there were five or six fish in my peg then. I mean, there wasn't just one wobbly one there, there were quite a few. As nice as a cow.
Stretching it. Better. No, we're definitely playing. Yeah, a little pinch of corn. Little blob of micros, not loads, because I don't want them to go nuts. Just that many. I'm not even going to feed the deeper line when I'm not on it. It's just drop on it. Nicotine. The only other one I'm going to feed is maybe one of my top yet. I might put another line in here soon and another one down that way. Just little pokey ones that you can just nick an odd fish off when they spook. In other areas, you can go on them and catch one. But I've gone back in the shallow water just to see. I want to see how quick they're coming in on your bait. I mean, I feel that there's none in my peg now. So I've put my bait in, my piles, my traps in, all lovely. Now I want to see how long it takes for one to swirl or for I mean, me to get another bite or whatever. It'd be interesting to see if they're straight on it or not. <laughs> Don't want ducks in peg. There's still nothing. What's that been? 30 seconds? Not a swirl. So this is going to make me decide whether, for the meantime, I need to rotate the two, like catch one, drop down, catch another one, wait to see something. I mean, only go into the shallower water when I feel that I know they've been visiting again, because it's shallow enough to see them most times that they come in. It's just a bit crappy light to be able to see, and that's a tricky bit, but they're still the visiting. Nothing's come back in on this, though. Did fancy that for a quick and then. How many left me peg when I struck? I thought there was a chance of going in and getting another one straight away, but maybe not. Come on, let's get another 30 seconds. If it hasn't gone under, well, I don't think there's one me peg. We're going down on the other one. A little wee bit deeper. A wee bit deeper. Ooh, yeah, one's just swelled, but closer to me. Really close to me then, that one was. That wasn't on the pallet, that way. Halfway between. Where there's definitely no bait, but what it'll do, it'll, it'll sneak that way. Oh yeah, yeah, he's on it. He's really close. Swell next to me float then. Tail next to me float then. Let's see if he has it or not. Coming in from that way, he's going to have very likely give me a line of him instead of a bite, but you never know. I get lucky. So yeah, a big wobbly liner then. But not like a fish spooky liner, so I don't mind that. Come on, you're eating it all up. About ten more seconds and I'm coming off it, because I should have had a bite by now if I was going to get one. Gonna feed it when I come off it? No, I'm not. Not yet. I don't even know if that's in the mouth or anything. That didn't even see me float. I just sort of looked at John and then looked back and mine went on. Amazing how many fish in front of you in it when you start playing one. Bloody everywhere. Big lad, look. Not a baby one, this one. It's a top kitty, man. Let's see. Oh, he's a ghosty fish. He's a big ghosty one. He's not in the mouth. Well, the carp are quite small, aren't they? But they're like quite new fish. Didn't deserve that one anyway. Didn't deserve that one. Go straight back in now because I've just seen a swell.
behaved, doesn't it? Of scale, don't we? Not ideal. Just felt dead nice that one, though. Like when we struck it, felt like it was one, but it wasn't. Right, we are at what we are. Two hours to go. Bang on, two hours to go. And it ain't horrendous, we're catching an odd one. John's got another one. They've just started coming in the edge. I mean, we've got two hours of edge and short fishing to go, definitely. That sounds a much bigger one John's got there. Um, but it's just getting them to come in regular, that's the tricky bit at the minute. So it's hard to go in and get fast bites. So when you see some, you feed it. Sorry, when you see some, you go on it, put a little pile in, you get a bite nice and quick. But then, after you've caught that fish, it's hard to get another bite. They're just not coming in fast enough, whether I need to up the feed or just time is more than anything. It's just, obviously, it's only two hours. And there's still two hours to go. So maybe that's why they're not coming in quite as fast as you'd expect. And another thing is that they're nowhere near as big as I expected as well. Quite surprised at the stamp of the carp that we've had. They're quite, quite small little ones to be fair, which is quite surprised me. Yeah, it's quite surprised me that the stamp. I'm not catching them great big old battered warriors that we used to catch in here, they're, they're quite lots of new fish, or newish, you know what I mean? Compared to the old boys, they're new fish. They're quite small, like three to four pounders. Like I've only got, what have I got? I've got 30 pounds in the net. We've got absolutely nothing. We really, really need to start catching, but... I don't know how, and it's doing me head in. I don't know how to force things or make things happen faster. All I can do is let them decide sort of thing. Like I've abandoned everything and just gone completely down the... Just bloody missed that then. Completely down the short route now, that is it. That's what we're doing. Yeah, unless a load of muggers pop up, which ain't gonna happen. It's happening there, is shad. Ugh. How'd you get a knot around your float? How's that even possible to occur and not around your float? Um, and so yeah, that's the way it is at the minute. I feel like I'm very much dependent on what these little buggers do. I've just missed two bites in there. I shouldn't have missed, they were bites as well. And, and they're tight. One thing I can't get to work is the deeper one. I can't get that to kick in at all. So if I could get that to happen as well, then I'd, I'd be real happy. Yeah, John's catching quite a few now. He's just had three in the edge when I haven't had one. Which is not ideal, and two of them sounded like proper ones. So I really do need to catch some fishies.
bit better, isn't it? A bit more efficient. There's another one waiting. Oh, you duck. Ducky, ducky, ducky. Everything is awesome. In the mouth. I think it is. I wouldn't bother with the effort, dude. I'm coming off it. Not liking it already. Then again. Size like a trout farm. Come on, hour and 15 to go. And different match altogether. Now everything's kicked in and it is edge dwelling is up. So my left hand edge is still my best. There's plenty of fish on this, but what I've also got now is I've got a resting area. As in, I've just caught one on my top kit on my left hand, on my right hand side. If that's what I was missing, there's somewhere to drop in to get a bite when this got out of hand or when it went quiet. And now I've got that. So it's just become an edge match that just want to rotate the two and pick an odd fish off. Really, really simple. Not a lot to it, Job. So the tricky thing on this left-hand edge though, uh, left-hand edge, yeah, this one I'm on. It's getting a clean bite. <laughs> it's got a little bit out of hand with the bait that's in my peg, I think. So I do need to be careful with it. There's still plenty of fish there. I'm just going to take a couple of mil off that depth. Something's gone on. I'm just going to feed corn this cast. Because, yeah, getting a bite's getting a bit bit tricky. But there's lots and lots and lots of fishies there. And they're not bad. They're a bit bigger. They're probably six pound on average now. So they're adding up nice and fast. But we're still behind. I mean, it's still a long way behind. I've got some catching up to do, but... Now we've got an option of doing it. Now we can do some clattering with a bit of luck. So, nice patient edge fishing. And hopefully it'll just get faster and faster. Just got to find the ideal place to, to put me rig to hopefully get a bite quick. That's what I really am struggling doing on this left hand edge, is getting a fast bite. I really am having to sit and wait, which I hate that. I mean, when there's this many fish in my bag, I should be getting a bite very, very rapidly, and I'm not. So I might have a little change in a minute, just a, a plumb up, just a, a little re-evaluation of where we're fishing and how we're feeding, just to see if I can make something better, because at the minute, it can be, definitely. Yeah, definitely can be, because they're coming. I'm just not getting a bite. I don't know if you can see that now, if you're down there now. Loads of fish in my bag. It takes ages for one to find it like that. Then, I mean, it's not rubbish, I'm not moaning, but it could be so much quicker. Which is how I need it to be a bit quicker. But we're in the gang now anyway, we're playing now. Officially banging now, in fact. So, we've just got to hope it continues and we can put a good old run in the net late on with a bit of luck. 
snakes, a big old fish there. I'm getting bigger as well, we're getting more older fish now. This feels like an old one. Less of them, like fresh four pounders. More of the old gnarly six, seven and eight pounders. It's a completely different match than we expected, sort of. Just nowhere near as many fish early on. It's a fight that this is going to be a common, this rich. Skinny common. Or a ghosty. Haven't had a ghosty, we lost a ghosty. Fell off. It's foul luck though. Come on, man, fishy. They're still not fishing very heavy, still on 014, so I can't go. Silly with him, he's gonna go nice. Right, let's see it. Mm. Cool on fishies. Be a big like this, much bigger than I think. but still good, like we're having there, 25. And another six, let's say, so 31. Not in there. Might have to send our Richard for some more net. We'll see. So there's still down there as well, which is the good thing. I'm landing a fish, looking down, and then there's still an odd movement. I'm just taking over on that one, just a bit of corn down there. To say if not somewhere I want to fill up full of fish. That's just a one fish every now and again. When this is doing me head in for whatever reason. There's the swirling or whatever. Being a pain in the arse to catch. See that is an aquarium down there now. Not what we want. Shouldn't have fed them really. Should have gone in then without feeding and tried to get a nice clean one. That would have been a more sensible idea, I think. So feeding when then when there's three or four fish in the peg. In that depth of water, that ain't good. So there'll be almost no new baits come in and sometimes they get excited by it and put the red strain on it and eat it, and that's when they're easy to catch, but other times the new bait falling around them like spooks them. And if it lands and then they spook, they just waft it everywhere. And that'll be what's happened once or twice and that's why I'm in a bit of a mess. We've got lots of fish everywhere and as I keep moaning about, it's hard to get a quick bite. Well, there's not one actually in my peg this time. At the minute, it's better, it's how we want it. Just an occasional visitor. That's better now. I'm not seeing fish all over the place, we just sat. And I'm happy I'm right over my trap. So hopefully one will come and find it. Mm, it didn't. It came and headbutted it instead. So I'm going to leave it. I'm just going to drop down here to let him calm down. I do think that's good out of hand, that line. So I'm just going to leave it for a minute. See if I can catch one quick one here. If we do great, if we don't, doesn't matter. It's, it's going to benefit us in that calming down. That's the main plant. A couple of pieces of current. Blob of micros. Dump. Don't need a lot of bait for this one. It's just little bits. Little bits. Let's put it in and then I'm going to get rig right over the top. We can't actually see this one. But let's see, just a sneaky, sneaky one. So maybe I've made a mistake not making it so I can see shallower water down there and give myself another pallet, but it's one at the minute we don't want to do too much and I didn't want to really to me right hand side it's dead awkward because it just is. So being a right-hander, we said this loads. Left-handed pegs always best. Just for holding your pole and everything. 
And I've got a bit more room that way as well. No brainer. Let's see, yes. Maybe we made a mistake. I'm not going to give this long because I need a bite really fast on it and I know there's fish waiting down there. And then one spooked. And I'm, did I miss a bite on that or something happened then and it spooked? So I'm happy that it wafted everything away. Ooh, not an indication. 30 more seconds, fair out of bite. Straight off it onto, <laughs> onto the carnage down there. It's a big bream or something. It's not a car, but it's a fish I wouldn't have caught, so it doesn't matter. What are you going for? I'm like, oh, I thought it was going to be a green one or something, Mick. Like a tench or something. Back onto the good bit. Leave that, I'm not going to bother feet. I might just give it a bit of a... No, have some of that generous kind of guy I am. Pinch of corn, stodgy micros. Go, go, go. Go, 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 go. It's a right bugger to see down there. That funny light from here. Really, really funny light. Well, at least all the bites are ridiculous. So I've got plenty of bristles sticking out and waiting for the Houdinis. Come on, quick bite. There's not as much bait in that peg now, definitely not. Can't be. I plumb up because I can't see what's happening. Come up again. Yeah, catching lots of fish. So playing now. Yes. This right hand edge is kicking in lovely. We just had a big one on it. And then I've gone straight back in and got another big one on it, but this one doesn't feel quite as big. No, not quite as big this one. As long as it's under eight pounds, I can put it in that net. That's what he found, isn't he? So with 30 minutes to go, it's just gone weird on me. Like in the last 10 minutes. Don't know what happened, I've lost a big one. Well, that was just foul locked. They just like feel like they stopped coming a little bit for for ten minutes. Mm. And other people are catching a bit quick now. So I don't like it. So just had another replum. Just to go like towards the end of the peg. Just to try and find like a clean bit or dunno, because I just wasn't didn't feel like I was getting a bite over my spot. Because of who knows what. So I thought Go back a bit and see if we get some clean water. Another two foot along the peg, but it ain't worked. But I'm saying it hasn't worked. Nothing's came in for it to work. Nothing's snuck in in the last couple of minutes. So I'm just going to sit here until I see one. I'll give it five minutes if I see one. I do need another little spurt. Because right there, we're getting this last keep net up somewhere near the few fish on and get a few fish in it. Oh, it has a swirl then. And then we got one. So we're just waiting for them to come in, the little buggers. But that was better. Having a clean peg. It's definitely right. Big one as well, this. Yeah. 
<laughs> this king. Take this king. Fall out, yeah. Right, we need some bait in this one. Yeah, what is this? I'm wasting the last three minutes here, Rich. Hold on. Can't see one down there, and that took ages to get a bite that last cast. Any second. Should have gone that way. It's all alright. You know I mean, I had a bit of a weird spell that I just couldn't really settle them down the edges, but. It went nice and steady, and I caught what my plan was at the start. You know what I mean? That one 120 pounds that I think I've got about 120 pounds. Would you agree with me, Richard, for a change? A little bit more. I'm having that with like silvers just ticket over. But yeah, I don't think it's going to put me in the gang. There, were, there was rumour of a few weights, and these lads look like they've caught. I think they've got mega weights, but who knows? I mean, they've got, I know he can't have, he's only got three nets in. But anyway, it's gone quite nice. I felt like I got things wrong at the start, but. I don't know what else I'd have done. I think it was just that they weren't feeding. And then we came in and, and settled just at the right time. So I've definitely missed a few fish. Maybe fishing the wrong bait there, corn. Maybe I should try them big owl pellets that they all do here. That might have been better. Who knows? So other than that, I think it's gone quite well. I'm quite happy. So the edges were quite tricky to, to get a bite with. I think half the time it's me being impatient. I mean, I just need to sit and wait and make sure you're coming in the gob and land it. And I was a bit. A bit scatty, so I always felt I was playing catch up to John, which I think I have. I think I've held just short of John. I think all that can dictate is size of fish, I think, but you never know. But very enjoyable, and we enjoyed that. On to the next one. So I'm going to go for all the rigs in a minute, wait for the scales, and then go to Bob. So, riggy bit, and back to front riggy bit because it was a bit chaotic this morning <laughs> getting here. Um, what should we go through? We'll go for everything dead quick. Meet me short line and my long line, exactly the same. Meet me usual. Tim Morsey carbon slims, both in 414, dead basic. You know, we, we've showed these sort of rigs a million times before, all on the orange stuff, all with o, uh, 17 and all on 013 up lengths, standard stuff. And shots are quite heavy though, because yeah, I'm not looking to catch any fish through the water, they're not feeding like that. I'm looking to get them on deck, loads of fish, loads of bites, and, and just didn't happen like that though. You know what I mean? It produced for 20 minutes, then it probably caught 10 pounds on it, and then it were. It weren't much cop, and we went a bit lighter today as well. First time using 18 up for ages, using 18 MXC6. First time I've done that for ages and ages and ages. So then we first two rigs that we started there and there. Shallow rigs, dead, 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 same, same as always. Yeah, I'm still on my point for, or me, my number three dibbers they are that Tim makes. They're all I use these days for carp. When it's carp fishing, when it's slapping, dead, dead similar. And um, with book number 10s right under it. Hook length of 013, so it does make a difference. Got a few more bites. Bigger hook on that one. I've got a little 16 on that one. So a proper hook on that one, but still all nice and delicate because they don't fight as much in here. Even you notice, even with the edge fish, they're not, the plodders in here, they're not racers. So everything was really simple. I set two of them up, set both of them at the same depth, both of them at two up, two bait boxes deep. That's the best depth at the minute. Everybody else seemed to go. And I set one up with two and a half foot of line and the other one with four foot of line just to, to see what were best. At the end of the day, I didn't even pick the big one up, but it was there just in case we needed it. That was pretty much it. Do you know what I mean? For, for the boring bit, other than that, it just came to two edge rigs. Pretty much, I had my shorter one there, meet me corn one, which was that one. There's them there, just spread out number 10s in the bottom third of the rig. It was a bit deeper, it was about there, wasn't it, on the corn one? That got binned, it wasn't right. Cut fish, but it weren't right. Everything wants to be tight in today, and I just ended up bodging that. I mean, cutting it right down so I could fish this. This is my right hand one. Just poking it right in as close as I could get. I mean, nothing's fancy. It's, it's just basic fishing, isn't it? But what's the difference here, though, is plumbing up to the middle of my body. 
normally down the edges, I like giving them a bit. But it definitely felt that if I was laid on, I was just didn't feel like I was getting bites or not seeing as many bites. So today it was really important to plumb up tight and to pull it so me um, hook bait showing up on my bristle. That were a big thing today as well, definitely. But standard floats, my two mil, um, Tim Morsey slims, the two mil bristles, which is replicated exactly the same on my tother edge rig, my main one, which again, just been 412, spread out your stots on that just in case I needed to bulk them. And they've been a bit battered and bruised and kicked all over the place with a four inch hook length. Again, because it's not like f one -y, little pokey. So I don't mind having a four inch in case I want to lay it on. In that case, I didn't. Same again, just pumped up to the middle of the body. Um, kit wise, again, that simple. 017 to 014 I fished today with a 16 hook on. So a bit smaller hooks, I think these are a bit clever. I mean, with the, the bait I was using, because I was just using single corn, just nice. I think a little hook rips through it better. So you do, you hook a few more because you, you, it's like pace fishing sort of, it pulls through your corn a little bit better with a little hook. So it's dead, dead simple. I mean, all to do with standard edge fishing setting of traps. That's been a key thing as well, is stodging my micros up. I mean, I have my normal soak micros, what I do everywhere else we go. And I've stodged them up, added a bit of corn to it, and I'm just feeding that, that lovely stodgy lump. Do you know what I mean? Feeding that every go, it stays nice and tight, enough for one gobful. So I need to get my trap in. That's what I've been talking about all day, is get me trapping without a fish there. So I can get the trap in, sit over the top of it, wait, I'd get a clean bite. Whereas if I shipped out and there's already a fish present, I'd put it in and it'd be a bit chaotic because it's getting washed about, made a mess of. Just, you, your trap's not set. I mean, it's not as perfect as it should be, which in turn leads to it being a bit longer to get bites. Plus, I don't know what's down there. I might even stick my hand in there now. I'd love to know what I was fishing on. I mean, a plummet tells you so much, but I don't know what was on the bottom. There were definitely a few nicky nacky new, lumpy, bouldery, who knows what's going on down there. And that can often dictate to whether you get bites or not with the, the way the fish come in, with whatever obstacles are on the bottom. But, I mean, we're without jumping in, we can't exactly find out what's going on. Other than that, dead simple. That was pretty much it. What's the weird plummets? Oh, that, they're my nipple plummets, they're just nipples, look. They're like Andy's nipples. Andy's like about that big though, aren't he? <laughs> Little nipple plummets. They're just quick, innit? Instead of me putting it on around, I just hook them on and they're just quick. The fellow that does the other ones does them, Mark, wow, oh, don't do that. Mark, Mark, what's his name? Don't know. Yeah, I'll put it up on the screen. Yeah, Rich can find out, drop a Rich. But yeah, Mark, little nipply plummets, really, really, really. I'm sure it was Mark. It is Mark, it's a bloke, the champion's feed bloke on, yeah. you know who he is. Nipple plummets, yeah. Just quick, isn't it? Hook it on, straight in, have a quick look. And very good for silt as well. So yeah, key to. You don't see this very often, Rich Chapman, do you? Oh, doing manual labour. Manual labour? Getting you doing a bit there. Absolutely disgraceful. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't mind a bit of manual labour. Normally on the on the cleaning at home. He's a highly tuned athlete. Got some lit then? Yeah, I can chuck them on top. Stick them on top. Yeah. Get them, get them on the, the third one, Dad. I'll chuck them on top of the third one. Only because I've got to reach over. I could have not fish. put in it though. 50 pounds dead. Thank you, Desmond. That was 50 pounds dead. Actually. Was it? Actually, yeah, was yeah, it? Yeah, it was actually bang on. Definitely going over that. Have you been you've been watching my videos? <laughs> 50 pounds eight. Bad power on what it? I must admit, I've seen you with four nets in, I thought you need to put five nets in. Yeah. 16, 10. Here's what I meant. Third overall, winning £420 and an inception station seat box worth £449.99 with £155.2 from Back Dean's 37, Jamie Hughes. Leave it there. Yeah, it's alright. Same again. Can we get one out? Quick one with Des. Yeah, that would be that, that would it? Well, quick wrappy uppy, and I properly enjoyed that. I mean, caught quite, <laughs> quite a few more than expected. The guessing, as always, was crap. And I promise, even Rich agreed with me to say what we had. So we're both useless, but I'm really useless. We ended up with 155. I think I got knocked back. 
I lost five pound, but I ended up 155, which luckily wouldn't have made a difference. It snuck me in third. So I got a nice box that you lot will be seeing very, very soon. Um, and a couple of quid made it well worthwhile. So I'm actually been next to the winner, which I'm not too happy about, but fair play, John. It's a very, very, very good angler at this place and got job done when he's on a few fish. Um, and Pete Upperton was second after that, but it's been a phenomenal event. I probably like, really enjoyed this. The Des has just summed it up wonderfully in that there's very few competitions that you can get involved in a match of this sort of standard and with the prizes that we've had just by winning a flipping three peg section, which is what the, the qualifiers were, the three qualifiers were the winner of each three peg section. So massively, massively a big thank you to Preston if anything for running this one and match fishing. Cause it's just been a lovely like new event, a nice fresh different one. I say to have the final year as well. I, I quite like this one. We catch a few fish here. So Hope you've enjoyed that. I definitely, definitely have myself and we will see you all very, very soon.